whoever wants to, to, to start talking. Uh, I don't even know if I did the last one. I don't even know. Did I do the last That's one? That's the perfect intro, Maximilian. The, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Who the <laughs> hell are you? Uh, I am Matt Muscles. Good. <laughs> other, pe- other people can now pick up on that. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. Hello, Justin. Today. Hello. How's everyone we're doing? Gonna, we're going to talk about fighting games again. And uh, again? Oh again, this happens every time. We're, so what I really wanted to talk about is like a hot topic. And it's something that is super relevant to what's going on and drama filled. And it is also related to the number one fighting game of this year. That recently came out, and it's Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Yes, we're going to talk about game? the number one fighting game, number one sports game, number one party game, and number one racing game of the year. Elden Ring. Uh, there's a topic that I've been waiting to talk about with you guys that Matt mentioned, and I'm like, oh my god, if we talk about this, we'll go on for hours, and it'll be nothing but Capcom games. Mm-hmm. And it specifically <laughs> was about what fighting game franchise. Would you bring back and like, how would you do it? Bring essentially bring it back from the dead. Right, Matt? Yeah. Like I was thinking this episode could be called turn the beat back or bring the beat back. Cause I don't know. Then I can have an excuse to play Cody's theme, uh, but it's probably tenuous at best. It's like there's, there's games where you can bring them back, but you have to think about it in realistic terms. Like that company owns that game and that company does the bare minimum or like, you know, that company goes the maximum effort. So you have to think about whether these games could be viable. And if you want to bring them back in a realistic way, or you're like, no, there's no, there's no limits. It's like, you have all of the money. You have all of the nether realm money, unlimited budget, unlimited mind power. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Mind power. That sounds that sounds great. I mean, you get everybody to play the games. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it, it is. But like I, I if we're going to talk about this, uh, we're all you know, we should all take the the path we want to. I'm I'm going to be doing mine on like the most realistic, like if this was actually going to happen. Yeah. But budget and whatever was limited. This is how I would do it, because I still think it's viable. Yeah. But if we all want to just use all of the mind power, if you want to use your decks, your stamina, your life, your vigor, <laughs> your strength, if you had all of those stats on the highest level, then you can certainly bring a fighting game because that's that's almost more fun in a way. Yeah. With so no limits. You we, know? we already have like an idea of what ours is or does do, do you both you guys have a good idea of what one thing you would pinpoint so far i have like a whole game design document ready to go <laughs> the end and the fan fiction yeah you're like a produce manager like a production manager at this point as uh, i mean yes and no like i don't like i maybe but i don't don't pin the game's hopes on me like that's that's too much pressure i'll, I'll just run away so um, um so in which my question is, are we all going to talk about Capcom games? Because Capcom is like the one company that has all the fighting game brands that they just have never done anything with in a hell of a long time. If not, we'll never do anything again within the near future. So is Justin and Matt, uh, mine's, mine's already immediately a Capcom game that my brain goes <laughs> like and just yoinks this. <laughs> is both of your guys' Capcom games, Justin? Um... I feel like there's just so many games and you know if 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 I had to choose a game that I really want to bring back that's like dear to my heart it's it's going to be the obvious like I mean you already started the campaign right. Max with the free MVC2 and <sighs> that's like the one game I really would just love to see back on modern just like you know platforms like Steam okay. PlayStation even the Switch you know stuff like that Fair enough. bring back the mobile version I bought the mobile version and I can't even download it anymore so so that's Justin starting the conversation Justin's is Marvel versus Capcom 2. Um, yeah, easy. And that, that's but, to but bring a fighting game re- back. But are you bringing back like like a remake of Marvel 2? You just mean like the yeah. actual old game? Yeah, you just here, here's want where that the mind back. power kicks in. If you had yeah, the yeah, opportunity yeah. to release on like whatever platform, whatever kind of version of Marvel 2, do, are you, are, is it going to be just a, re- a re-release of the old MVC 2? Or is it going to be a sprite-based remix slash 3D models for all the characters, uh, cut scenes? Like, and how, how crazy Anything do you think you it would want. need to be? Man, I, I think the old release in terms of the gameplay, um, I wouldn't change at all just because it's it's just that memorable to me. Uh, but I would love just to have more like modern 
fighting game like stuff that's in it like tutorial modes uh trial modes challenge modes um even the like the whole ratio thing like i would love all that stuff in the game because i think the only thing we really have in mars capcom 2 back in the day on console was score attack mode yeah. and to be honest that didn't do a damn thing it really yeah. didn't do anything you know you get the points to unlock the characters or whatever that was pretty cool uh but ultimately i just think more single player experiences is is the key and plus actual real endings because yeah. bro there's 56 characters i would love to see 56 you know graphics of that's endings. a nice update besides the besides the same thing with like ruby heart the pirate scene and credits and that's it that was whack you know what i mean i i, I hated that but i would love endings you know real arcade mode i want to see morrigan kiss spider-man and spider-man freak out about it he's like oh god i can't do this mary, mary jane. jane oh no i'm sorry <laughs> But Spider-Man takes a selfie of it happening. He's like, why am I doing this? I'm, I'm, I'm outing myself. And he so, sells it to the Daily Bugle and he has to explain bro, it to Mary Jane. You don't know that the, the funniest part is Marvel's Capcom 1, if you win with Morgan and Spider-Man, you know how they have like a quote. Their quote, uh, Spider-Man's quote says, um, I hope Mary Jane's not mad at me for going out with Morgan like to dinner or something. Yeah. And this is hilarious. There's a, there's it happens to Ken too. There's some freaky stuff in MBC1. That happens with Ken. Ken in pie in Pocket Fighter. He's yeah. like, oh, I sure hope Eli does, uh, doesn't mind me having tea with Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, she's gonna. She gonna be mad. The uh, <laughs> She's just a friend. It's funny how Marvel 1 Morgan is like super lewd and rude. She has like a dominatrix win pose outfit that's removed from some versions of the game where her butt is just hanging out. And they have oh, yeah, a, yeah. she has a super in Marvel 1 which is just a straight, I'm going to sex you super. And like, it goes, cuts like to a, to a flashing screen where it's like, you see just silhouettes and all this weird stuff happening. And you're like, only in my head can I imagine what's actually going on back there. It reminds me <laughs> of like the poison super in a wonderful throwback uh, that I'm about to mention to, uh, to, to final fight revenge. <laughs> With the it's, poison it's, super. Been, it's been two episodes since we've talked about Final Fight. <laughs> we have to. Um, uh, it, it, so little like, you know, 14 year old Max's mind was going crazy with the possibilities of what was happening during those supers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's, true. It's, it's it's like the it's like you know how I don't know if you watch Naruto. It's like how Naruto did like the sexy no jitsu. Yeah. But this is the Morgan version of rage yeah. of the loving raging demon. That's we're gonna call it the loving raging the demon. The gentle and, raging demon. It's funny because like things like that were actually missing from Marvel Two, and that's one of the things that I would like yeah. if Marvel Two came back. I'd like to change that. Like if there was an option that we had, some some characters are just made unviable in MVC Two due to lack of supers or just due to lack of way of comboing into their own supers and stuff like uh, like a very large like even half the cast for the most part just the, the it's so much more difficult to even play those characters than some others it would be neat if like some characters just got more utility supers or just allow every character to combo into something like give somebody give characters the ability to do that just a little bit okay what if crazy idea here is if we have a hyper street fighter 2 anniversary edition for mars that'd be 2, incredible where you can where you can pick like if you want to pick a marvel superheroes marvel superheroes wolverine versus like a x-men versus street fighter chung lee make that happen and make it a 3v3 crazy that is arguably one of the best things they could do to the game if it was like we have all the budget in the world we have all the resources we can just like take previous versions of characters and throw them in there. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. And then you could also, and similar to Hyper Street Fighter 2 Turbo, uh, just play it, just play Super Turbo, right? Just play like the neutral yeah. version. And you just, you, you preserve the competitive history of the game. And if everybody wants to play classic Marvel, like that's amazing. Because I think like if Marvel 2 was released in some way, the gameplay still stands up, which is awesome. Like if you actually put in time into other characters, you'll find... Uh, really cool synergy which you have done on your channel like like crazy uh but for normal humans that aren't like the fighting game lords it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time for some of these games which is why people gravitate towards the good characters so it'd be nice to like mix things up i think people would like seeing that it'd be nice if a mingo was a little bit better it'd be nice if like you know potentially like Mega Man could do something other than just jump hp all day long you know like things like that yeah, because as soon as you started talking about this, it popped into my head Hyper Street Fighter 2 because the Versus games have such a legacy of the sprites getting reused and like there being different versions. Like it plays perfectly into it because 
if you are going to, let's say they can only release one, like we can only release one Marvel game. Like that's how you get the maximum amount on just one release. Yeah. Let them play as older characters. I don't know why I think of this, but I always think of Mortal Kombat trilogy, how you could select MK1 Kano, yeah. like all the yeah. way back in that game. Like, oh, I, who wants to select MK1 Kano? <laughs> yeah. One guy does. However, and that game is for, for him. That game you know? is so beloved. Like, people still talk about MK Trilogy to this day, how it never came out on anything beyond, like, what some bunk PC version, uh, Saturn, PlayStation, and N64. Yeah. And I think even competitively, even though it lacked, like, a lot of stuff and was much different balance-wise, the N64 version is what everyone still played, even though it's, like, on N64 controllers. Um, Damn, like yeah, that, that's crazy. That game is still super beloved. Uh, so I think more fighting games that do that, and Capcom even has history with this working, like, Ultra Street Fighter 2 yes. is practically that. Yep. There's yeah. that and uh, Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter yeah. 4, when the last update, they allowed you could play like vanilla version Ryu versus like Ultra Ryu is back, right? As well. So, I mean, Street Capcom can do it. They've done it already with two games. So, why not keep doing it? Yeah, that, that would be if you got, if time and budget could go into it, that's a really good call. Like, would you, for Marvel 2, though, would you add anything, like, uh, Max mentioned, like, a story mode, pr you know, probably that's really messy to do, but if they could add, like, little comic book cutscenes, like, just enter, like, a little intro for your character, like a, like a rival, like a rival team fight, and like, like you said, an ending, is that, like, something you would see, or it's like, ah, uh, just an ending is fine? I want every character to have their own, like, specific yeah. ending. Okay. Like, just get, like, so, Udon to like, make it or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's like a little, just a little comic book strip, like one or two pages, and I would be completely happy with that. Mm. Uh, just because the artwork is literally what I always um, went for as a kid. I feel like as a kid, every time I played Marvel Super Heroes or Marvel's Capcom One or X Men Street Fighter, I literally wanted to beat the game of every character because I want to see what like that art gallery thing looks like for that specific character. Yeah. Mm. I agree. So and also, I'm sure you both agree with this delay based net code. Yeah. Oh yeah. Great. I'm glad, oh, I'm yeah. glad you course, all agree. Delay Hyper code, delay yeah. based net code. <laughs> <laughs> how how delayed can we get it to? <laughs> like we want we want we want you to be playing games in the past. I want like, like I want like the net code happened. that would have gone into the original Xbox version of the game when that was supposed to be online, and then they. Scrapped it in like the last month before it was going to come out. Oh, man. You remember, do you, Justin, were you there for that when it was like, oh man, Marvel 2 is about to be online on only the Xbox version of the game? It's going to have online. And everyone was super yeah. excited about it. And then it came out and then it was just missing. Yeah, I was super excited because. The launch game was um, the launch title for Xbox. They had CVS two as a launch yeah. title, and that had it online. Did. And I, I remember I would go to my friend's house every weekend to just try to get to the, the top leaderboards. So I'm thinking, man, this is the future, yes. right? And I can't wait for like other fighting games to come out <laughs> with like with online. And, and yep. I see Mars Capcom two coming, so I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna get this game for my friend. And we're gonna play. We I buy it, go to his friend's house. No online. I'm like, bro, did I just get jipped yeah. for this, bro? It was crazy. They said it would have it too, and it just launched and wasn't there. It's like the OG Xbox online is the future, man. Like, it oh, was. this is where it's well, the, like in our mindset back then, it was like, I'm no longer gonna have to spend quarters to play this game. Like that was the that was like the idea of having the home version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's just, you know, back then, like all of like, well, did, does, do any of you remember those like OG Xbox games having like at the time even like decent online or were they all bunk? Oh, I can tell you because oh, I played the shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was bunk. Yeah, yeah. CVS 2 was yeah, I like CVS. The online for CVS 2 is pretty good, at least from my perspective. Yeah, it, it, so it was 100% shit, right? It was terrible delays made this base net code. But if you did get people in a reasonable region like the same state if not same like zip code or if like somebody really close to you it would be functional it would function okay. like a a like a bad delay based net code game today like a like a like a funky connection but it would still be like playable in some way so it like definitely not no, nowhere close to what street fighter 4's online was right like a really like a kind of a bad match in street fighter 4 is what it felt like and that was at its mm, best yeah, yeah. so mm. That didn't stop me from putting possibly three thousand matches into CVS two, and I and I think over six to seven thousand matches into Third Strike on the original Xbox online, 
And believe it or not, like, there was always one dude that I played in SoCal in Third Strike that actually got me way better at the game when I was trying to get good at the game to learn matchups and stuff. And I didn't know this was his handle, but the dude's name was Cali Power. And I played him all oh. the time, and it was freaking <laughs> Valle. It was Alex Valle. <laughs> I had no idea. Bro, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's great because like my the person that I played most of the time is like this really old school tournament organizer uh, named Jason Wilson. Mm -hmm. And he it was like really OG during like Vi's time running Midwest tournaments. And I would play him every weekend in CVS2 for like hours. We would just match up on rank and just like play each yeah. other. I, I have a suggestion for Marvel versus Capcom too. Like again, um, unlimited budget, let's say like real synergy. So Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is getting re-released. All these fancy features. Um, the X-Men 1997 TV show, the animated show that's coming to oh, Disney no. Plus, you yeah. have a crossover episode. <laughs> that's that's meant to advertise the game. You bring in some Capcom characters just for that episode, and they're like, you can see more of our battles, kids, in the new video game. It's Marvel like cable Cap time jumping, and he just ends up in like Marvel vs. Capcomville. Exactly. Dude, That'd I have this so like sick. secret hope. I have this oh like little inkling of a hope that like in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness when it eventually comes out that he goes to some place and like Ryu and Ken are there fighting like Cyclops or something like that. I got this little I, hope. Or Ryu and Cyclops shaking hands. Yeah, exactly. Listen, we live in a world where there was a Star Wars movie where someone said in this live action Star Wars movie, I trained in the Terrace Kasi fighting style. Yes. If that can happen, <laughs> then Max, your dream can happen. I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh. As soon as I saw that, I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, who does that? So. If if Disney does own everything, like uh, there there just needs to be one Max or one Justin or somewhere in the creative pool, <laughs> and they'll be like, "You gotta get that in there. <laughs> you gotta you get have that to. in there." Thanos <laughs> has yeah. to shoot bubbles. <laughs> you know, just we, throw bubbles. I feel like when we were watching Infinity War, that was a reference. That was for us. I was like, "We did it, man. We made it." Thanos has bubbles. <laughs> So for that Marvel uh, versus Capcom crossover episode into the X Men '97, the bad guy is Abyss. That's the threat of that episode. Some big that's how you monster with three forms. Yeah, yeah, that's how you work it all together. That's perfect for a cartoon. Like he literally looks like a cartoon villain that you'd see in anything. Uh, I think if there's a thing that I could add to Marvel too that I've always thought would be nice if the game could get upgraded, and this is a big budget thing. Um, but, but it's also a quality of life thing, in my opinion, that is still in the realm of possibility. This isn't even reaching insanely deep into, uh, like, the, my mind power. It's more of like, I think this is, I think this is doable, um, is to actually give the characters in MVC2 their proper animations back. Because Marvel 2, even though it was on Naomi, it was on new hardware with a lot more RAM at its disposal... Uh, a lot of the characters in the game are like halved in their animations that they had from previous games. So there's a, there's a ton of cut frames of animation. Sentinel is the most hilarious one where he essentially has like two frames, two or three frames of like an idle animation. And if you look at him in X-Men Children of the Atom, he's got all this crazy stuff happening. He's like going up and down. There's, there's air flowing out of vents and shit. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, the characters look so much cooler because they have so much more movement and stuff like that. I think keep the gameplay, but for all the attacks that could use like some more of the in-between animations that they had from X-Men Children of the Atom and Marvel Super Heroes, especially those two games, because those games are like... They, they went ham on the character animations in those games. I think that'd be amazing. I think characters like Spiral sort of get the uh, the shaft in, their, in her moves because she's missing so many frames of animation in comparison to uh, the old version. That is like yeah. a really good call, but it's so granular. Like it is. you would have to get you would have to get like Iron Galaxy or like someone that's just like uh, fighting games are in our blood to like yeah. know like that's something we can do now. I agree. Um, and I had completely forgotten about that too. How everyone in Children of the Atom had like because there was only what like ten characters. It is yeah. So yeah. yeah so 10 like characters. It, they they can spend way more on animation for over ten characters, but when Marvel's Capcom two, there's like fifty six. So yeah, yeah not really. And viable. like, and, and you could just 
it's it's like some characters are just going to look bad, like Morrigan and stuff like that, and Felicia. They're just going to look like they're Dark Stalkers one iterations. It's just the way it's going to go. You get that yeah, next to no, Cable, and it's going to look rough. It. Do do not change it. Yeah. If some guy goes in to change it to make the no, you <laughs> slap his hand. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, that's that's like it, it, it's a granular thing, but it's also like a wonderful um, front of box like like highlight. If you were to re-release the game, you could also say that we've like remastered the game and restored the animations that the characters had before because this has never been done before like this this was impossible with the original version of the game but then also obviously have the original version if you don't want the animations if you don't want all the characters to have all that extra movement and stuff like that that will just resemble the old one just have that too i yeah. I, I got one for you so if there's a physical release of this magic marvel versus capcom 2 version let's say limited run handles it and you know like sometimes they'll have like an n64 ish game so they'll give you like a like a fake gold cart oh yeah and then for this they give you the ram expansion cart for the saturn as like the fake little freebie <laughs> and you're like ah oh, you remember this shit don't you that'd be like, cool yeah, just just the lineage of versus games. I just think of the RAM card you need, expansion. You need those so four much. megabytes, where it's not gonna run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the N sixty four expansion pack, but uh, yeah, that the uh, just give me fake N sixty four expansion packs. That should have let you had like clearer voices in Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Yeah. Because I remember one thing in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, going back to that for some reason, is just it had really, really muffled voices because the N64 sound chip was, like, not that great because mm -hmm. obviously CD format. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I already put my piece into what Marvel uh, versus Capcom 2. It, it would be cool to have, like, some type of little, like, you know what? Go, I was playing River City Girls Zero, recently, which is a re-release of an old uh, Super Famicom game, and they got it working, this emulator technology that they use to put in this shiny, awesome-looking intro that's, like, animated, um, and that looks really cool. Like, I would love to see a fantastic, very comic booky looking celebration of versus games like an intro that exemplifies that like all the characters having like quick little clashes and a, like a nice logo and everything like that would be like a little uh cherry on top of the sunday yeah i i yeah like just novelty stuff right Mar marvel mm -hmm. 2 didn't get a lot of that kind of stuff even the arcade version of the game doesn't have official artwork like just the yeah. console versions do it'd just be nice to see uh, or, or if marvel 2 was re-released in some way like what if we got those things? And I would also love the story, right? I want to know if Marvel 2 came back, get a hold of the producers, <clears throat> find out was the game made on an insanely tight budget that you just crammed all these characters? Like, what was the thought process behind adding, like, Marrow and, like, all these... I want to know what the... F well, give me the actual history of Amingo, like, the the real story. Like, is he the Darkstalkers? <laughs> Weird, like, throwaway character? What's going on, man? As a promotional thing or unlocked in the game, you have Esteban make a documentary yes. about it. Ooh, that'd be, that'd be good. Send that'd him be, to Japan. Because he's so good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he probably has all this info and data lying around just looking for a, a reason to use yeah. it. So that'd be sick. A yeah. bunch of unlockables in general. Like, you know, they, they Capcom does do a good job with having like a museum section, all these re-releases. Yeah, they, they, so. they, they have been recently recompiling a lot of their artwork that has been in archives and they're actually doing stuff with it, which is great. Yeah, I I think adding skins would be pretty cool too, right? Adding skins, I I would love that just because, I mean, Marvel three, uh, and Ultimate, not Mar yeah, Marvel three and Infinite have some skins. So having Mars Capcom two skins would be you know another like uh, new thing that people can. So you mean new color really palettes, right? Appreciate. Yeah, new color palettes and mm -hmm. also even have a color edit mode because I think that was the one thing that everyone did in Dreamcast was have different colors for their yeah, characters. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's a good call, too. I was about to say, like, oh, how are you going to do skins? I'm like, yeah, uh, at 2D games nowadays, like your Skullgirls or whatever, like, they can do a lot of impressive things with just editing the colors to make them look like whole new characters. Yeah. Not whole new characters, but like, oh, that's a JoJo reference. Or like, oh, that character's color scheme is clearly, like, hinting at Potemkin or something. So, yeah, no, that's a good one. I completely agree, and I think it'd be amazing. And uh a color edit mode would be amazing for Marvel 2, and it'll and my stupid mind power goes down 900 points, and it's like it'll never happen because Marvel <laughs> would have to absolutely approve all the colors that would be added for yeah. their characters, and they would not yeah, be cool with you just making custom colors on their characters. Yeah, you're probably right. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that my stupid mind power has to go that direction because it should it, be true. It should be that way. It's okay because if the game comes out on PC. 
on Steam, then people would just edit the colors, oh, yeah. make new characters. You know how there's Mar- the Marvel Three palette swap. Imagine that for Marvel Two, because you you tweet you tweet you retweeted something this past week about like it was a Marvel's Capcom One scheme, and then the person that did the artwork had like you know Hot Ryu and Miles for that. I think adding those characters and people would definitely probably add more characters just because. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. Well, it's mm-hmm. and it's funny. It's like the same people people say the same thing where it's like why don't we just get another 2d fighting game and like those those mock-ups are like one frame of animation of 900 yeah. frames of animation per character that you're gonna have yeah, to draw to or something like character. that and it's like oh yeah that's right this is really hard and takes a lot of time <laughs> like and there's no <laughs> development pipeline anymore for sprite-based artwork in these big companies so they just I, it'll never happen I'm not sure if you saw this take on Twitter, like, uh, you know, kind of related. It was a guy was like, this is how you fix Elden Ring. You drop it into Unreal 5 and then you release it. <laughs> and then everyone's like, just, yes. yeah, you just take Elden Ring EXE into Unreal 5 folder <laughs> and just. <laughs> so you just, you just drop Marvel vs. Capcom 2 into Unreal 5. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yes, you know, that it, works it'll do too. the work for you. Easy, Unreal easy 5 fix. is amazing. <laughs> um, so Matt, my, I'm going to go with you now. Yeah. My mine is not a Capcom game. Okay, good. Uh, just because, just because I'm like, let's let's. <laughs> I thought basically both of you two would pick one. Uh, mine is Bloody Roar. Okay. Now, the problem is that Konami owns Bloody Roar, so you know. If I could, I would take it away from Konami and give it to someone who like regularly makes video games yeah. uh but but i'm i'm actually like this would be if i was locked in a room with konami execs that actually had this power like i'm trying to do this as realistically as possible i had to bring this back so um i would say a bloody roar reboot like just call it bloody roar the lore of this series is some of the most lame and non like important lore ever you're not really losing a lot by like just saying basically a killer instinct right um we're starting kind of over here's some things you know and are familiar with but essentially it's just a reboot so i don't know if you want to call it give it a bad subtitle like how dark siders games and other thq games oh, are oh, called. let's do it right now bloody bloody roar reboot a new new surtitle uh, new subtitle. Um, I re I have reclaw <laughs> reclaustered. I, I, I was th- my, my brain was also going to claw in some way, like using reclawed, always clawed. Yes. uncaged, bloody roar, feral attack. <laughs> so here's the thing: bloody roar two had the subtitle of the new breed. Oh, that's amazing. Because animals but then breed. Gets, <laughs> yeah, but like also it's it's too much like the Bloody Roar 2 title, so it might be confusing. But at the very least, you just call it Bloody Roar. So, you know, I'd say release this on, on everything. And when I say that, it's because this does not need to look like Street Fighter 6 or a Tekken 7. I don't even think that's what most people think of when they think of Bloody Roar. They think of Bloody Roar 1 and 2. Does it need to look like Killer Instinct 2013? No, like that because that, that's like an in between ish, like it, it where it's like it looks good, but it's obviously not like super like an insanely high presentation, yeah. high budget. Well, at you know when it, when it, when Killer Instinct launched, it was like you know kind of what you sort of expected. Nowadays, like yeah, it's it's I so I I kind of have in the thought of my head it would look like a uh, fighting EX Lair, yeah, or oh, um, okay. Or like a high-end Ultra Street Fighter 4 type thing. Like, I still think it should keep that anime aesthetic that it had going. But that got less and less as the games went on. They had a darker color palette, darker costumes. But I'm talking like bright primary colors. Like, the first two were kind of like that. They're very 90s in that way. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I don't think it should look like a AAA game. Because again, I'm saying like, you don't. You don't need to spend your money there, especially if we're dealing with Konami. That's you know that's kind of not making big, huge budget games anymore, at least not yet. Um, so absolutely, blood needs to be included. The last two or three releases of Bloody Roar did not have blood in the game called Bloody Roar. Um, I think uh, GameCube Primal Fury, Bloody Roar Extreme which was a massive lie because it was not extreme. It was less extreme than normal. So I think that needs to be there. But again, it should not be gory. Hey, Max, uh, do you remember when people were like, 
oh, I, r- r- I wish Killer Instinct reboot had all the gore and all the dark, <laughs> edgy shit from the first two games. Cut to farting Riptor. Cut to farting Riptor. Know? Yeah. So cut to orchid just, flashing Glacius and alien and eyes bugging out. Yes. Like, whoop, whoop. The, the, P, the PG 13 like, error. Yeah, you know? that's, yeah, sorry, Justin. It's like the PG 13 error. It's like when you have WWF going to WWE, you have to kind of sometimes make it less bloody or gory or graphic. Yeah. yeah. But like the, the, the games had splashes of blood whenever uh, animals had their claws out. Like when you punched characters, uh, two humans, like no blood at all. Yeah. It was only when yeah. it, it was like realistic that way. So I would still say that needs to be there. Um, it, here, here's a funny thing about blood in, in fighting games. Like obviously Mortal Kombat 11 is like blood tech, right? They do all this really crazy stuff with their with their uh, visual engine on blood tech and getting that to really pop in, yeah. in yeah. some situations like brutalities and uh, fatalities. But funny enough, you don't really notice like the blood in fighting games in actual combat that much. And here's no, not really. here's a perfect example of it. Like MK11, it's all over the place. MKX, it's all over the place. But during the actual fight, you don't really notice it. The same thing happened in KI very early in development in 2013. And I was like mentioning uh, this was like only maybe a month after the game was first revealed. It's like it doesn't seem like there's a lot of blood in the game. So the next time we came back, they made a note of it and actually bumped up the blood a bit more. And it's like, you know what? I see it now and it's fucking everywhere. Like <laughs> you hit a character with a, a heavy punch and it just splashes all over the floor and you see all this gore flying out of their mouth. But then as soon as you actually start playing the game like a little bit, it completely goes away. Like you just don't see it anymore. Because it mm. was a really dark sort of blood and since so many of the stages had like you know high contrast like a lot of dark shadows and that's it didn't use it you didn't notice it that much so the the reason blood we remember it being so pinnacle and important in like older fighting games is because there wasn't as much visual complexity in older fighting games right there wasn't as much stuff to be like as eye-catching so when you had this giant red splatter like in ki with these giant gore like gore like uh puddles that flew out of people you really noticed it because the stages weren't like red or anything like that or just had very few color palettes in the background now with fighting games you got so much stuff to to see and look at that it almost gets like I, i hate to say it almost bleeds in to the entire image and you don't nearly see it as much. I'm I'm a dad now. It happens unintentionally. <laughs> the dad jokes, yeah. So no, it's, it, it's it, weird. It, make, it makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense because like when you look at like Mortal Kombat two or Ultimate Mortal Kombat three, and you throw like Katana's fan and like all the blood <laughs> splatters <laughs> out there, right? There's the st- stages are very generic, normal, right? Now you're looking at stages and you fight. You're like, oh, who's in the background? Look all these tall buildings, right? You're like, you see all these cool a lot guest more stuff characters. To pull your that's attention. what you really notice. Yeah. So the same thing, like, like in my mind, if you go back to play Bloody Roar one and two, when the the color palettes, like the characters are really basic, they're you know blocky, and the stages are really basic. And when people would like slash with their claws or they do that leaping strike where they grab into someone, you see like this arterial spray, and it's it's also really similar to Bushido Blade. When people bled in Bushido Blade, you noticed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like that, like absolutely needs to sort of be there. And, you know, again, it'll calm down people that are like, but where's the blood and bloody roar um, for the roster really quickly. I was thinking that's like for this type of thing altogether, there's not even that many bloody roar characters because they would they never got rid of a bunch except for the first one. They got rid of like three. And after that, they just kept adding one or two here and there. So like there's less than 30 characters in general. But I'm like for a thing like this, again, trying to keep it you know sort of manageable i was like 12 to 18 fighters at launch and then like you know uh like a season or two of dlc yeah one legacy character like a special boss that's not there at launch and like a new character and like have one or two characters in the basic launch as well um you know the uh, essentially also make sure to include the uh, one of the three there was a gorilla a boar and a fox and mm-hmm. maybe the gorilla. That seems weird. They had a gorilla in the first game, and then that's just <laughs> never again. Not there. A little strange. Um, was it the gorilla like, guy G from Street Fighter Five? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, it was like the almost that's, the exact same design. Yeah, it's uh, that's oh, that's confirmed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in the story mode with the little graphic, I'm like, why is there a gorilla there? And then here's G. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, so, like, everyone was, like, actually wondering, is this a crossover with Bloody Roar? <laughs> like, when it was first announced. <laughs> the character's name is Greg, and he does have a hat, but it's more of a top hat. It's not quite, like, uh, well, yeah, that is pretty similar to G, but he was, like, a darker skin character. But, uh, yeah, he would, he would be one I'd absolutely want to include. Uh, like, I said this was a reboot, so you absolutely have to reboot the story. Make it clear, uh, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. That all if you go back and look through all the bloody roar stories, they're nonsense. They make no sense at all. So you want to keep it very simple. There's a fighting tournament to find who is the king of beasts. That's it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it is held by the president of the United States. Yes, who wants who is a furry enthusiast. Yes, who is also an he, ultimate beast himself. Yeah, yeah, he's the final boss. He's the oh, final he's boss. He's the final boss. Oh my god. This is gold. It's how he was elected. <laughs> he was the strongest beast. He was the strongest um, what's, beast. What, what, what's the what's the beast? What's the animal for him? Ooh, uh, an American eagle, bald eagle, yeah, American, yeah, a course, giant yeah, American bipedal eagle makes American eagle. <laughs> With and he's missiles. flying around the stages, so you can't even attack him that easily. He's just literally above the sky, yeah. and you you just keep. He's some night terror, Soul Caliber three shit. Time. During his level three, like during the finish splash screen, it's like Mount Rushmore, like raises oh, yeah. behind him, raise. and like fireworks go. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, we just we just uh, Konami, go ahead, you can have that, you can have it, go that's ahead. That's gold, yeah. baby. That's gold. You send our send a check. Moves American holidays. Send call a check to the, Triple KO, the, the, please. The Independence Day. <laughs> yes, the Memorial it. Day. <laughs> yeah, you have special events on Independence Day when uh, in the game. Uh, in terms of gameplay, I'm sure you guys like at least know that like Bloody Roar gameplay. Play is, is simple it's accessible it's like three f like three buttons and only like one of them is like attack and then one is like your beast attack so you know keep it pretty simple i would say that um as a new feature you can ex uh your mm. regular special moves as a human by sacrificing a little bit of your beast bar like as it stands all the games like basically your beast bar is returning into a beast and that's it but when you're human, you have very little, like, to do yeah. against a beast. Yeah. So Makes I think sense. balancing them just slightly. I was also thinking, like, you know, each game has two. Um, the later games have like two beast drives, two supers, and they, you know, va they vastly different. Uh, sorry, they differ uh, quite a lot between each other. Like one's a counter super, one's like uh, one that you can do in the air, or one's like a, a grab, one's yeah. you know whatever. So keep that. But I think like. There should be like a level three, like something flashy. Again, you want to bring in people, like show this crazy move. And maybe that one's a bit more violent. Maybe there's a bit more blood splash to that, that type of stuff. Here's my question for you, Matt. Considering yes. you're bringing fighting, uh, a fighting game from that era and the gameplay from that era to the modern era, do you 2.5D it or do you keep the sidestepping? I'd say since... The sidestepping was in it a lot. Like I think it was in every game. Oh, it's very yeah. It's very it's very prominent. Yeah. It's it's pronounced. Uh, you can like roll to the left or roll to the right or sidestep in. I'd say I'd say keep it, but because there's no like projectiles in that game, like it's essentially you know a stripped down virtual fighter. I think it's fine to keep it because on a casual level, like people wouldn't use it that much. Like people want to mash buttons and see cool B shit. And I, I think you could probably keep it, but that leads me to another thing is that when you would beat, uh, uh, certain bloody roars, like two, three primal fury and so on, you would unlock a lot yeah. when you would, uh, clear arcade mode. And one of the things you unlock is modifiers to a lot of matches. Like you'll unlock like a list of rules that you oh, can turn on and mode? off. Basically, it would be like no walls on the stages oh. or Ooh. very weak walls. Or it would add like team mode where it was just like King of huh. Fighters style uh, team mode. And I'm like, that's I, I don't know why I think I think about this. But I'm like, I absolutely want that in this game. If you clear arcade mode, you unlock like a little little thing. It doesn't have to be huge, but it's a new thing. And unlocking match modifiers just simple little things would be cool. Maybe you can unlock uh, the ability to like play without uh, sidestepping, like that type oh, of thing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I just remember Primal Fury on the GameCube having like like twenty things that you would unlock, like stages, the two bosses, and all these modifiers. So that would be cool. And I guess the only other thing other than that is um, that 
maybe again if you want to keep it on a lower end spectrum for the budget it's like maybe make this a digital release yeah see how that goes yeah again this is an Bit older limited franchise run to make like a special edition limited run or whoever just konami themselves like limited run and konami do have a relationship they were putting out castlevania uh special editions lately for those collections so i would say like if if you're still not sure, oh, we don't want to go like full hog into re-releasing this and bringing this in as a new franchise relaunch, maybe keep it digitally, see how it does, then put out a physical one, either limited or not, and and go from there. Again, I want this to happen really bad. So if <laughs> anyone from Konami is listening, like I mean, the action figures too. So, I was thinking of making a video where I get like an artist to do like all these relaunch characters. Like, I've been thinking, yeah, I want to, I want to pitch it. So um, it, it, this is just one of those games where I find like it has so many releases, like four numbered ones, two special like turbo enhancements, and like it's the one fighting game that has like not been back. Like it's has that much game, that many titles, but it's still the one that's not here. Yeah. Like virtual fighter. I can't believe it, but that had a new ish yeah. release, you know, Tekken's yeah. obviously still around. Like to me, like Toshin Den is around the same thing, but I think in my mind, oh, maybe is. I'm off, maybe I'm off base <laughs> about this, but like bloody roar was a more well-remembered, than Toshinden. I think so. Yeah, yeah. people have you, a lot of okay. like fond memories of Battle Arena Toshinden. And I don't. <laughs> so I go back and I play it. I'm like, see what this Toshinden. is all about. And I'm like. <laughs> Wait, you're you're a Toshinden head, Justin? Like, like as a kid, it was super fun. I, I recently played it and I'm like, damn, this is a this is a very tough fighting game to play. And, you know, <laughs> it was like, very yeah, hard. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as a kid, I'm like, man, I love AG, man. Sophia, AG, all these characters. They were. It was. It was a great game as a kid. But when you start to understand how video games are meant to be played, or like, like you understand more of like the design, or like and balancing from you know your other experiences, you're like. Man, I don't remember this game being this bad. <laughs> <laughs> there was like this weird Wii one, I think Max played it, where they just took the name and that's it. Like it was all new characters. It was more of an anime arena fighter. So it was like free movement inside an arena. And it was just called like Toshin Den, like Gaiden or something. It had, oh. a, had a different name that came out. That was a Wii exclusive oh. in Japan that never, that oh never reached God. our shores, oddly enough. So that's a lot of really good recommendations, Matt, about Bloody Roar. But here... Uh, Konami, if you're listening, ignore everything Matt said. You're going to sure. release three versions of the game. A PlayStation, an Xbox, and a Switch version. Now listen. The PlayStation version is going to have an anime opening cutscene. The Xbox version okay. is going to have the same cutscene, but it's going to be in CG. Uh, and then the Switch version is going to have the same cutscene, but it's in claymation. And that's ooh. how <laughs> that's how you do it. That's one of the weirdest changes when you're looking at all of them. The fact that they're like, oh, we need a more American intro we for the Xbox CG version. For some reason. So have an ugly, Spend the money like, on that. like, it's so bad. And they, that, that, that version does have like a weird extra, like, you know, a shadow character or whatever. But that was just such a weird change. Like that money was wasted on that intro. Like yeah. that cost something. For anybody that doesn't know what the free. hell we're talking about, like Bloody Roar had this really cool anime intro on the GameCube for Primal Fury. And then like a version of the game popped up on Xbox not that long later. And it didn't have the anime intro. It had the exact same intro, but it was all weird and CG'd out. Like early 2000s <laughs> CG, and it looked awful. It was shot for shot. Like some guy's fist would come out that like this way, and then it would the exact same thing for the Xbox version. It was just it was the same length the intro, and just yeah, let's just pay someone to you make know? CGI because Americans like CGI, I guess. Yeah, different different audiences when it comes down to. It. I feel like Xbox is a very American system. Even Japan don't really care about Xbox too much compared to PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um. So that's my, my that's my bloody roar pitch. Bloody roar re uh, re clawed. Uh, clawed it claws again yeah. you know whatever you want to call it um it's never gonna happen so I, man we don't have we don't have a ton of time left but i got two i got two, two games you, know, you you, I got you go two. off king you just go give off. Me, just give me a second so sure. number number one and it's been it's been uh nine years it's been nine years since killer instinct has been back 
It has no. been nine years since KI 2013. I guess that makes sense. 2013. Like since the, yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay. And it's been it's been uh five years since the very last amount of content was ever added to the game. It's been half a decade, right? It's been almost the entire length that Street Fighter V had been around, and they have announced Street Fighter VI, like an e almost equal amount of time. So yeah, I would like Ki to come back. You know, I might make a hashtag or some shit and try to get. Uh, that, on the you, side. I don't think you should. Maybe do something on Twitter. Um. Anyway, I like mm -hmm. Ki to come back. Uh, if I had uh an unlimited budget, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna tone down the mind power, and I'm gonna hopefully propose something that might be a bit more plausible. If you were to bring Killer Instinct back. Um, I would like Iron Galaxy to make it, you know, I think that'd be great. And we know, already know this is yeah, not happening, but I would like to see um, a game that reutilizes assets in some way, because the if there's one thing about Killer Instinct, I feel like you can change the characters. I feel like you can change the visuals, but the core gameplay design elements that make KI 2013 to 2017 so good is one of the things that cannot be changed. Like... The, the 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 way the combat is structured and combo breaker mechanics and counter breakers and like what characters are capable of and their unique combo stuff like all these things that sort of make KI KI is super important and I almost want it to be like expanded upon in in some way so I would I would be down for like a 20 character roster at the start with the characters even retaining a lot of their moves and just adding things to it, right? Just giving characters new things, new visual overhaul, just give characters, like, make some existing moves, give them new animations, that kind of stuff, like, make make Jago's uh, wind kick look different, you know, I don't know. But things like that, like, you don't have to go, I don't think you need to go 1000% and Street Fighter it, you know, where we're just going to completely start from scratch. I don't think that's necessary with KI. I think keeping the game relatively familiar is totally fine. And Yeah, that's a good call. The other thing that is really important, make it truly a free to play game. Make it really actually I want I want a fighting game that actually is I just want to play online and that's completely free. Like every single character in the game, it doesn't cost anything. It is completely free. However, they monetize the game through battle passes and season passes, the usual actual modern day monetizable methods that a ton of games do. The, the biggest challenge that fighting games have is getting people to, to step in the door and to invest. Yeah. That's the, the biggest, yeah, toughest part. They, people don't want to spend 60 bucks to get their ass beat. So mm. make that part easy. And then if people like what they like what they see and they want the alternate costumes and they want crazy alternate colors and they want accessories and that kind of stuff on their characters, so be it. I think that's how that's I think that's the future of fighting games and monetization of fighting games. And I think KI is a perfect game for it because of Games Pass. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you, you did mention that um, with the Killer Instinct uh, being super like real free to play because I think when it first launched, like you only get like two characters. It's it's, right? it's you get like yeah. Jago and Saber Wolf. When it first and came out, it, it was characters. a rotating free character. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, they they had the beginning inklings of that, right? Because what essentially was was like you get all the offline content of the game for free, but it's only a single character that you can play, and you can't choose. So it's cool. Yeah. It's like it's like the beginning of like the game is technically free to play, but it's like the the very first model of a fighting game that kind of does that. And uh, yeah, League, League of Legends actually does that too. Yeah, the rotate champions and everything. Oh yeah, exactly. So and that's what I mean to go go full bore with it, go full gore with it, and just <laughs> commit one hundred percent that this game is going to be free to play, and we're going to monetize in these other ways, and have that be their. The, bridge the gap of the casual audience because I'm telling you man you can solve so many issues of fighting games um, of like what people complain about matchmaking that I can't find people to play with that I can't find people of my skill level like all that kind of stuff you can alleviate so many of those issues if the game did not cost 60 bucks when you mm. wanted to jump 60 or 40 bucks right if you wanted to jump in and just try it you can just give everyone yeah, a chance yeah, that makes sense yeah, even even Street Fighter Five did that with like well, I think like a year ago where they made Street Fighter Five free yeah. for like it's two like free weeks. on PlayStation. Yeah, every once in yeah. a while. So what about like you know any robust single player content? Like, if do you think that has a part in it, or like should that be a paid for I, thing? I think that's the part you can actually charge for. To be honest. Okay. Okay. I think if you want to do like arcade modes, I mean training modes. No, tr I think training mode and online should just be free. 
but they mm -hmm. they should offer like arcade modes and a variety of other modes like they they pretty much had like a quest mode already and and several like shadow modes and all the nutty because ki 2013 has so many so much content that it's ridiculous 2013 to 2017 yeah. So I'm not even yeah. thinking about like single player, but there, yeah, make all that stuff the stuff you actually pay for. Like make that like the twenty buck, the twenty dollar buy in. You know what I mean? So that's it's kind of similar to what Microsoft did with um, Halo Infinite, where the multiplayer component is completely free to play, but you have to pay for the single player campaign. Now that single player campaign, I don't know how long that is, but I have to assume it's like ten hours of a campaign or something. But yeah. like I, that's a little. You can't charge full price for like what would that be in a single player fighting sure. game content, but there's some, there's definitely something there. When you first said this, I was like, "He's crazy, get him off the show." But <laughs> as you talked about it, I'm like, you know what? Like, no one has pulled this trigger no yet, yet. With, with a major fighting game, the game franchise. With an actual budget. Like, like, like oh, here. But here's the thing: it's not that no one hasn't done it; it's been done. Brawlhalla did it just poorly. No, well, what about like Tekken Revolution and all that shit? Oh, that's that's the perfect example of being done poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. games like Brawlhalla, for example, like there there are a few indie examples of games that have done it to resounding success. Brawlhalla is huge, it's and that massive, is not like yeah. a giant budget kind of game. It's a game that became big because the accessibility of the game was super simple and it ran good like, online. Like Bra Brawlhalla has a better roster than Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I don't like, want to hear anything. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, they got Ryu and Ken now, and Akuma, right? Yeah. Ryu, Kuma, and Chung Li. No, they got like Tomb Raider and shit. Like they got all this stuff. Yeah, they got uh, a lot of characters. It's crazy. I think Finn and Jake. That's or... what I would hope for Ki. That it'd be like outside of like, because there's gonna be another fighting game that'll do that. It's gonna be League of Fighters when it eventually comes out. That that game is gonna Fighters. probably do a similar a similar structured model that like League does, and it's it's very similar, like the season pass thing, character cosmetics monetization, but all the characters are free. You can play it online for free. You know. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, what I would something really quickly I don't want to see for a Killer Instinct game is I don't want that to become a Microsoft fighter like I don't yes. want really Ram don't see that? and I don't want to see that in the sense that like that's what they were do that's you, know, you just got that feeling like oh here's Arbiter here's General Ram here's uh but then um, here's Rash. Joanna Dark. You gotta start. Don't think. Don't think just in like the the sort of like limited scope that the old KI, KI twenty thirteen to seventeen had. Think of like now. Here's Doom Guy. Yeah, but it. But <laughs> that's cool. You're like, you're like, oh, but but. but I just want every character. Give give me like a whole roster. Yeah, I, I don't want it still just need to a, be you still need original an Xbox characters. game. But then I but then I want a separate fighting game for that, not Killer Instinct. You know, like then I I wouldn't mind if Microsoft made like their Microsoft uh, Smash game, but keep Killer Instinct still separate. Nah. But, Nah, nah. I, I I would love it if Microsoft like allowed Ki to be like the a, a, a not like a platform game. Like I, I it would be great if it was like a two point five D like easy to get into, hard to master, motherfucker. Like this is a fighting game, and it's it's Microsoft's like attempt and their characters and just go nuts. Like mm. like how many are we like like percentage wise? How many are Ki characters of the entire roster, and how many? Like that are Microsoft characters from other franchises. Like, what, what, what well, is the percentage that is acceptable to you, sir? All the KI characters are already in there. Like, to okay. be honest, every single Killer yeah. Instinct character made it technically they, in they the did. game before any guest characters started showing up. Uh, so, yeah, to me, that's kind of okay. Like, the KI roster wasn't that big in the old games, all things considered. And by mm. the time, like, Rash and Arbiter and Ram started showing up, they were already, like... And they still had new characters. They, there's finally, like, a female vampire. It's like, oh, cool, yeah, mm -hmm. Mira feels like she feels yeah. exactly like in the KI world. But for... But, what, like, what is a percentage that's that's just then for too many guest characters that it's not even Killer Instinct anymore? It's, um, like, something else. I, I think, like... I think a third is completely third. fine. Okay. Like a third of its characters being Microsoft staples or Microsoft like 
here's ghost from modern warfare 2 <laughs> like weird shit like you're getting real crazy like here, here's the lich king Con here's banjo <laughs> yeah, here's, oh, yeah. If you yes give me Conquer and number banjo, one yes that, that is what i crazy. want i want banjo kazooie in killer instinct hyper realistic ah, like an elden ring bear <laughs> with a bird on its back a giant condor that's also like ah like and then so he's not friendly he's anymore gun. it's not a friendly i want it i want a, a hyper gun, realistic playable banjo kazooie uh, that's what i want he, he has a he has an ultimate where he like reaches into your chest and pulls out like a jiggy piece and yeah. you know like that's amazing Yo -ho. okay so hmm. you mm -hmm. you convinced me i'm like that's stupid and then you're like it's an elden ring bear ah now i'm on board <laughs> i'm on board with this idiocy <laughs> what about this then so the problem i would i would say from like dlc characters since you have this is your game max you get the you get to choose are you making these guest characters um, um, because in every guest in every game these guest characters are always op they're mm -hmm. always oh, yeah. overpowered they're Usually. always the winning characters um yes and if i had a choice of guest characters i think microsoft can reach into the the, the giant santa claus sack that phil spencer has in his office of like contacts and individuals and industry people that he knows and uh this will also cover another game that i feel could be uh, should, should have been mentioned on this show, but isn't. And here's here's a way that you bring that back. What if the next KI had Darkstalkers characters? Oh, you just doubt that, that is that's like some multiverse shit that you just said right there. <laughs> uh, because they they do fit in same like, exact it, feeling. It, it's the exact same theme for the games for the most part. Like there's samurai, there's like ninjas or samurais. There's ghosts. There's, there's ghosts. Yeah. There's there's uh, werewolves. There's Giant bees, gar gargoyles. There's no merman in Ki. Though. Perfect. Rico's in. Okay. There you go. Al there's aliens. Spinal versus Lord Raptor. Like, oh man, it's that's perfect. super good. It's yeah. and here's yeah. here's the last thing. If I can do one last thing that was just like oh, mind power in '99, the game's made by Arc System Works. The, the, all of kill the Ooh. entire game. The whole game. Games like designed by Arc System, like like in the same way that Dragon Ball Fighters was like managed by Bandai Namco, but made by Arc System Works, mm. right? Like yeah. Bandai Namco essentially figured out a lot of the things they wanted gameplay wise in the game, and Arc System Works put their spin on it and their touch. The same way that Capcom designed, you know, Marvel versus Capcom three and Street Fighter four, but those games were made by other companies. Just right. get Arc System Works to put the game together, add their visual spin, and. See, I for Killer That's, Instinct that, though, like it, it for, might be tough huh? for Darkstalkers, absolutely. But it's like yeah. I just can't see an Arc System game that's not bright and like you know pretty anime. Like I would like to see that, Wouldn't but it's, that be it's just challenging, hard for me to though? picture. And don't devs like to be challenged challenging, by yeah. things? Yeah, I mean they're they're essentially putting out like really similar looking games recently, so. I mean, it would be interesting, but I don't it know. Would, it just... would look, it would look so much different. It would be like, like different, like opposite ends of the spectrum on how Arc Systems' take on Killer Instinct would be. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I would actually be kind of excited about. I'd be excited to see like what would be the Arc System take on what a Ki could look like. I mean, it, it almost feels like more of a uh, like a fan art thing. Like, hey, our system, draw us what that looks like. <laughs> yeah, I want to see whatever. what artist I Alley. <laughs> B Orchid looks like from Arc System. Oh, okay, now I want to see. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I want to see what your take on Glacius is. Full gore. Fucking full gore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking damn. Full gore. Hisako. Jago. Hisako. Hisako. Jago. <sighs> Just, just start thinking of Arc System's perspective on those characters, and uh, you're sold immediately. But but you had that video where it's like uh, you talked about those rumors that maybe even the Tekken team is potentially working yeah. on Killer Instinct. Bandai Namco just, might be involved in some way. And I'm like, that made sense to me just because the the art style, the, like the dark tones and like special effects. I'm like, that makes sense to me. Like I can picture mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. Gameplay wise, I'd be a little worried. Oh yeah, me too. What 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 would that look like? But yeah, it would be a really cool idea if like certain like stylistic Japanese studios were given like a very American IP, like if they were given Mortal Kombat or anything just to see what it would look like yes. or make it like a spinoff, like smaller scale fighting project just to see what it would look like. Because that is intriguing the more I think about it. It's like we, we kind of just saw it like DNF Duel 
is a game where it's like you just have these little tiny sprite characters from like the mid 2000s that are mm -hmm. essentially doing all these cool moves and it's like give us the arc system work spin on these little sprites that do all this stuff and you see that and you're like it, jesus dude oh my god this is amazing it, it, <laughs> It, it does look beautiful, for sure. They did a great job with the DNF characters. Yeah. And uh, to close this out, because I know we're getting short on time, um, I got a real quick one that everyone's going to agree with and nobody will disagree with me. Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Marvel vs. Capcom's back. Instead of Genius being this weird, <laughs> unique thing, it's a celebration of the entire series of the game. You get to pick between classic stages. You get Marvel 2 stages, Marvel 1 stages. You get Ooh, like the music okay. from any of them. You essentially Smash Brothers Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom bring back every single 3D model your ass made from Tatsunoko vs. Capcom to Marvel 3 to MVCI. Make sure they're all in there and add 10 more characters. Characters. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, that that that. I mean, I I would be hundred percent buying ten copies easily. But what what's the ten characters though? Max? Ten new so characters. That's the most important. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important all part. X Men. Part. They're all oh. X Men. Every single one is X Men characters. Can we get a Professor Xavier X? Yes, he, he'll, he'll play him like air he does in, in the wheel, too. In the wheelchair. In a wheelchair. Yeah, him in the wheelchair air dashing. <laughs> then he'll do flips and shit. <laughs> Uh, we, 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 I want to delve into this a little bit more though. Like, um, I'm you ready. said, okay, what are your X-Men? What do you actually like need to see in there? I'm assuming Gambit. Four different versions of Wolverine. Number one. Four. Bone okay, Claw. Four. We got Bone. Bonier Claw. Boniest Claw Wolverine. Uh, you joke, but the there was Can we get that? the movie Logan? The Logan yes. one? Where he's, when he's like kind of old old? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you joke, but there was that bestial version of Wolverine in the comics in the late 90s where his bone claws got, like, oh barbs yeah, yeah, on yeah. them. I remember that one. That one was crazy. He had no nose. He de-evolved the nose because I guess you don't need that. Um, but, yeah, no, okay, I guess. Re realistically, I would, I would include as many characters in the, the classic pantheon as possible. Make sure everyone from, like, X-Men versus Street Fighter is kind of in there, right? So Cammy should have been an Ultimate Marvel 3. Cammy should mm -hmm. be in there. Cammy's always felt like she belongs in a versus game. Rogue and Gambit yeah. should be in there. They just got added to Fortnite for Christ's sake. Um, <laughs> the, the things like that, you know. Um, I, that also makes me think that, like, I would love to see Arxis do a remake of X Men versus Street Fighter. Like, now that you think about when we're, when you mentioned DNF Duel, I'm like, that looks like a 3D X-Men versus Street Fighter, just the way the characters are re rendered and how they move and, and whatever. And yeah. it's like, I would even like really appreciate if Capcom could make like here, like it's a smallish roster, but there's a lot to chew through here in terms of mechanics and all the fun you can have with uh, everything. And, but it's, yeah, we're farming it out to arc system works and it's a smaller game. It's not going to have a big single player story mode or whatever, but it works and has rollback, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just, that gets me excited too. It gets me more excited than like uh killer instinct by arc system works just because I th when I think of Arxis, I think of bright colors. I kind of still oh, yeah. think of the 90s a little bit. And that's yeah. no nothing more 90s than the Versus series. Oh, yeah. So. The Versus series is like the epitome of it. Okay, so for Mars Capcom 4, now to piggyback off of that, one thing that they haven't done in such a long time that I totally miss is the ability to, like, pick secret characters. Like, would you have that in there where you, in like, I, I think maybe you, go war machine. I think or, you can relatively make secret characters kind of easily on existing palettes. Like you could you could take Wolverine and there should be like a secret code for old man Wolverine and it slightly yeah. changes his moves a little bit but doesn't take up an extra roster spot, you know. Yeah, he's he's just slower. Yeah. He's like, he's like, either, yeah. he's like, like slightly slower but more strong but more powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. Different some he slightly different combos. He has more emotional power, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's got more, more emotional age. power. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be uh, cool. Yeah. Sh Shadow, you know, bringing back Charlie, Shadow, bringing yeah. back uh, mm -hmm. Shadow Lady, bringing back, like, a lot of these. I think you could even just make these characters bosses the same way that Street Fighter V did. I think that's completely Ooh, fine. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. And, oh, num number, if you want to talk about single player in a Marvel vs. Capcom game, for God's sake, add a boss rush mode. And like include all the bosses that had ever been included and just re re revisualize them in the game in some way in like 3D and allow people to fight those bosses with co-op. But like let one person pilot each character. Battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have Onslaught in there, yeah. Onslaught's in there, Apocalypse is in there, Cyber Akuma. You can also do Shadow Lady and uh Charlie, right? You can you should do Cyber Dan. 
right? There, there should Cyber be goofy fan. stuff like that. Yeah, because you have to have onslaught because it's like you know, let's let's all be honest, gentlemen. We've all jerked off to onslaughts like animation frames. He was so cool. He was so cool. Yeah, <laughs> like no that's, one that, is that's, safe. No one is safe. Big coom. <laughs> um, but boss rush is really good because like what wasn't that. Am I thinking of something else where it's like someone did mod that or like Mugen it or something where there was like a boss rush somewhere? It was done to Marvel I... 3 where they okay, that's they, they essentially SNK to Galactus and actually made him a, a tough oh, fight. That was good. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you, you guys did videos on that, right? Yeah, it's tough. It, 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 it took me like eight hours to, to try to win with my to win with my Evo yeah. team. And I, I, I did not want to give it up. It took at all. me like five and a half hours and I eventually used Virgil, which I've never done before. And I, I beat it. And I was just like, I can't do this shit anymore, man. I'm going to the dark it side. It was fun though. It was good. Uh, any, any, I think uh, as, as if we're going to be winding down here, is to, do we want to just throw out random names for, of, of anything you just want to see? Maybe not go into detail. That, like, could, be, that could be a fighting game. Yeah, sorry. Did you say something, Justin? I didn't hear. Uh, let's go with Fourth Strike. I mean, they fourth already strike, have a mod yeah. version on Fight on Fightcade for it called Fourth Strike, but seeing it in reality would be pretty cool. I because I remember seeing Fourth Strike teased in a magazine, like, "Oh, it's coming." I'm like, "Oh yeah, for sure it is." <laughs> and then yeah, it didn't didn't quite happen. Um, I would like to. I I know this is a stupid one. I like to. I love Mace the Dark Age. That I just love edgier Soul Caliber. Yeah. Like mm, is okay. cool to me. Like a more edgy American Soul Calibur. I'd like to see that. Come Do you have back limb in dismemberment fashion. in it? Uh, limb disme only in fatalities. Okay. Like, but not during the actual gameplay. And I think I think I've got one too. Uh, mm -hmm. As a as a final note, I want Capcom versus SNK three made by oh, yes. modern day SNK. So yeah. technically, Ooh. SNK versus Capcom, like to this day. I think that's a good call just because SNK didn't get to fully realize exactly. their version of that because the game was rushed towards the end. Uh, uh, CVS Chaos. I was like, whenever CVS I go to America Chaos. and I see a CVS, I'm like, ooh, Capcom versus SNK. Yeah. CVS Chaos. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good call on that one because I, I it, seeing all those models, seeing the Capcom models in that 3D in like the King of Fighters 15 engine, ooh, that'd be good. Sorry, I, wait, King of Fighters 15 engine. Sorry, I mean Unreal Five. <laughs> 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 or is it four? I forget which. But I like, think, when I think, they I think said it's four. But yeah, Unreal Five yeah. just drop it into the folder. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, drop That's it how you make fighting easy, games. Easy make fighting games. Easy make. Like, like if Justin or I or Max just wanted to make a fighting game right now, we just take the old game, we drop it into the Unreal 5 folder, and then Bob's your uncle, you know? I got, yeah. and here's a funny story of how complicated that is to, like, to like summarize this up. I talked to a dude in a chat room that, that coded Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the PlayStation 3 and 360 version. He was essentially like nice. a lead programmer that hobbled the game together. And I was like, what did you guys use? Was it, is it essentially like, did you, did you have to reverse engineer the game? He's like, no, we got source code. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, Capcom gave us the source code of the Dreamcast version. And I'm like, so how the heck did you, how did you made the game in six months? How did you put that together? He's like, luck. It, it just, a lot of the game mystically came together, <laughs> but it was held together by like duct tape and string. So oh my any God. small changes would fuck everything up and the whole game would just be whack and, and everything would be off. He's like, however, in the process of us getting it working on modern day systems, he's like, some glitches fix themselves. So Gambit's glitch when he would like, yeah. he would like essentially crash the machine and you would not get to play anymore, uh, didn't work suddenly and they actually pitched it as a improvement of the game like oh it's a significant <laughs> better version of marvel 2 we got rid of the gambit glitch but it turns out that was just like a byproduct of them switching everything over to modern day architecture so huh. yeah I, I think a lot of glitches that you've seen in like arcade or dreamcast they they actually do not work at all on the xbox and no they PS3 don't because it's a different it's yeah. technically a different game yeah, so like when you bring it over, it's just like it's something. It's like a an issue from back then, and some are just going to be fixed. Uh, like usually video things, you know. Yeah, when 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 you get things to work on different hardware completely, and that wasn't designed to work on that hardware, things will just act differently. And unless you have like a bullet point and know exactly the way everything should act, it's just going to be that way. Like Justin, for example, Air Hyper Viper Beam is not like zero frames. If you're if you're not blocking yeah. like in the arcade version and you see Hyper Viper Beam come out, you should be able to block. 
Yeah, you should be able to block. In um, the Xbox version, say, you can. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah, if you play the PS3 slash 360 version and you're like sitting there neutral and Cable does yeah. Hyper Viper Beam, you're hit. You're hit. If you weren't blocking ahead oh, of time, man. you're getting hit. So there's like weird oh, things. Okay. It's all mm -hmm. over the place because it's a different game running on a different engine. So those are the, those are those interesting things that even if, like you said, if Marvel 2 came back, how much of the same game would it be? You have to get someone with like a fine tooth comb to go over like all these little elements. Yeah, probably. They They probably have to like just get so much kind of reference and have like experts from like previous teams to really like polish the game to make it arcade perfect yeah. and here comes our mind power is slowing down we're at the end and suddenly <laughs> we're like we're, we're being grounded into reality where it's like yeah you know it's probably not gonna happen but you know it'd be cool <laughs> It'll be cool. Maybe in the multiverse, in a different universe, things like that could happen. Yeah, yeah like Warner Brothers just waiting for you to re-release, you know, War Gods whenever you're ready. Like, Max is ready. I know he's ready. Thanks, Matt. You I'm nailed ready. it. Yep. I just, War, War Gods. Yeah, War Gods. Just waiting on sure. that War you know, Gods re-release right next to Biofreaks <laughs> and whatever the hell that <laughs> ass fighting game was on PS1 you got me to play. I want just a collection that says like poverty collection, yes. you know, like I just, and it's all like American midway old games at Warner brothers. Just we need to touch, talk to someone at Warner brothers, like just release that, a bad collection. Yeah. please. That's, I mean, to be honest, that would be super fun. I mean, I, I obviously I don't think it was, it will do well, well, but I mean, I'll buy <laughs> the crap out of it. I'll buy if it's a copies. poverty <laughs> fighting game collection. I'm like, Oh, that's I'm in there, bro. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Give me that Criticom, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I want it to. I'm sure this is a subject we can we can all uh, loop back around towards in a future episode because there's still like we like we didn't even talk about rival schools. We didn't even talk about Power Stone. Like yeah. even uh, Dark Soccer's a little bit its own standalone game. So like you know, I'll 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 think you open up the old yeah. think tank and see if there's anything. Garo, else. But... Last Blade. I mean, there's just so many. Games we can have out we there can make the entire you, podcast about this now. We could. Just from this Jack point forward, yes. It'll just be about and things that can't happen, but we wish could. <laughs> that's such a depressing podcast. <laughs> no, oh my god, that's listening. so sad. And you're like, aww. You, you give all these great ideas, but guess what? It can't happen. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I think Capcom does a great job when they're adding like collaboration characters. What? <laughs> I've never been able to extend this way. <laughs> oh god, I gotta get the helmet on. Oh god, oh god. Wait a minute, our guy's a bad guy the whole time. I just think it's crazy that I'm better at video games now than when I was like 16. That is how you fix all the problems with all these games. I feel like toy distribution is so different than it used to be. They re-sculpted over the chest, they gave him a flak jacket over it. I laugh when I see Among Us, but I'm not having fun inside. I'm just, <laughs> it's a reflex. No, you took my <laughs> Jump! <laughs>